the elites in various societies that are uh, uh, engineering wars and pursuing a policy of divide and conquer um, for control over large populations on this planet seem to all be involved with these entities. They seem to all be like involved with what the Sumerians call Anunnaki or what the Greeks called the Olympian gods or with what the Bible describes as the Elohim, which by the way, it's a plural. People think Elohim in the Bible means God. They translate as God. It means the gods. Mm. Yahweh is Adonai Elohim, the chief of the gods, the same way that Zeus is the chief of the Olympians. Okay, but do you think Dick Cheney was in, was talking to the aliens, or do you think he just wanted to make a I ton think of George fucking Bush money? Was. I think George Bush Sr. was. Yeah, but... Junior was a moron. We know that. Yes. Junior. But Dick Cheney, the guy behind Cheney, the Iraq war remember, who owned... Re I, listen, Dick Cheney worked with George Bush Sr., George Bush Sr. put Dick Cheney and Donald Rumsfeld around Jr., all right? Sr. told Cheney and Rumsfeld, take care of Jr., we have to do certain things, and you know, you know how Jr. is. I need you guys with him. They were from George Bush Sr.'s administration, mm -hmm. and when I say George Bush Sr.'s administration, yeah, and when I say George Bush Sr.'s administration, I mean also what he was doing to undermine Ronald Reagan during Reagan's entire presidency. Reagan did not want George Bush as his vice president. He thought he was a total creep uh, coming from out of the CIA. You know, he'd been former director of the CIA and he's a 33rd degree Freemason. George Bush Sr. was 33rd degree Mason. And his grandfather was Hitler's financier in America, Prescott Bush. So Bush Sr., yes. Bush Sr., I think is someone who like literally has at some point sat down with these seven foot tall Nordic people and had policy planning conversations with them. I wouldn't be surprised at all. And so what Bramley found is that you had that kind of thing going on throughout human history with various elites in Sumer, in Greece, in Rome. What, what leads you to believe that? What is the most convincing evidence for you that George Bush Sr. had meetings with Nordic beings? I don't see why he wouldn't. I mean, if if George Adamski is... You don't see why he wouldn't. Yeah, look, you know when David Grush came out and talked about all these reverse engineering efforts that are underway, right? Mm -hmm. One of the most interesting things that he said was that not all of these craft were retrieved from crash sites. Some of them were what they now call donations. Mm -hmm. Okay, meaning there were cases where we have been handed intact craft. That's been confirmed by a number of people other than but David when Grush. He's, right when now. they say donations, yeah. isn't he saying that these things would crash? Like they're so sophisticated and so advanced, they wouldn't crash by accident. They yeah. would crash them on purpose yeah. to help like stimulate human society and stimulate our innovation. Like take this and see if you can figure it out. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I, I, I thought think, that's what he was saying. No. Um, there is no way in hell that a civilization that advanced would volunteer this kind of technology to any stratum of the US government without an extremely detailed agreement having been reached. And that would have to have been negotiated by both sides. But if you're so advanced, why would you want to, like we don't go to the Congo. No, it's not, they're not, it's not like that, man. It's not, they're not like so advanced. And this is one of the most dangerous um, uh, assumptions that people make that we're dealing with like some kind of ethereal beings that have such a vast cosmic horizon of understanding. It's much more like when colonial elites encountered savage or primitive populations, like when the British Empire or the Portuguese were out conquering very undeveloped societies, mm -hmm. right? By comparison to the people in those societies, including their chieftains or their shamans or whatever, those uh, colonizers were gods. And we even had like cargo cults, you know, arise in, in uh, Polynesia and the Pacific, where the islands that the British would land their planes on wound up being the site for cults of like straw planes made by these natives yeah. mm -hmm. to pray for the British to come back because they're gods. And what I suggest to you, this is a rather grim uh, grim uh, assessment, but what I suggest to you is that the people who are flying around in these uh, anti-gravity craft 
are not any more ethical than British colonialists or Nazi Germans in North Africa. They have more advanced technology. That doesn't necessarily mean they have any more of a sense of uh, beneficence or humanistic ethics than any of the colonial elites in our own history have. Right? After all, if you look... So it's like own, us compared to hunter-gatherers, like like us te technical technologically civilized human beings in Western society compared to like an uncontacted tribe. Yeah, and disturbingly, if you look at our own history, our recorded history, what we've been allowed to know of history, there's a direct correlation between scientific and technological advancement and brutality. So, the more technologically, scientifically advanced societies are the more brutal and more exploitative ones. Why would we assume that if the trajectory continues into the future, things would be any different? Right. No, I agree with that. And at the same time, you know, I've thought about this before. We've talked about this on the podcast before, but we can exist right here in America, whether you be in New York or Los Angeles, in taking autonomous vehicles to different places, using these these phones that could connect you with anyone, anywhere in the world, see them on video, right, in a second. At the same time, simultaneously, there are other places in the world where people are running around naked. Yeah. So why wouldn't it, exactly. why wouldn't it go the same way into the future? Why couldn't we be as primitive to a whole nother civilization of beings as those uncontacted tribes are to us? My point exactly, but here's the ethical problem that I struggle with as a philosopher. Why is it like that if a group of humans have passed the technological singularity, right? If a certain group of humans developed the level of genetic engineering, nanotech, artificial intelligence that we ourselves are going to have 20 years from now, why didn't they raise the rest of humanity up with them? Yes. Moreover, why are they reaching back through time to very deliberately oppress and manipulate more primitive societies? Well, why don't we why don't we try to elevate those uncontacted tribes? Well, because every time we go around them and try to try to interfere with what they're doing, we get killed. They shoot arrows at us. Sure. Sure. Uh, but you know, maybe they should have shot more arrows at the British right, in some of these places. My point is that that's, that's a, a very beneficent motivation on their part, meaning, okay, these are violent, crazy savages. We don't want to get, you know, shot down by these people. Um, what fits the data, if you look at, you know, how various societies going back to the Sumerians uh, were governed, is a much more explicit and active agenda of manipulation. And the, the manipulation is geared toward setting up a pyramidal caste society, an extremely stratified society where, you know, the vast majority of people are the base of the pyramid, and then an ever smaller group of people represent higher rungs until you get to those who serve the gods directly. In India, they call them the Brahmin. And their purpose was to like directly interact with the devas and to carry out their directives, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so that's what I see. I don't see like, you know, I don't know, whatever, you know, Rockefeller's son like getting like hunted by cannibals somewhere in some jungle. And then they decide, oh, better, better that we don't go back down into that savage part of the world. Uh, I see a much more deliberate agenda of manipulation. And so then the question becomes, why? Why? was that decision made and by who to occult, to secret away singularity level technology, have a monopoly over controlling it, and not only leave the rest of humanity benighted, but actively encourage uh, their, uh, and reinforce their ignorance, right? By, by, let's say, engineering the collapse of the Roman Empire and the rise of Christianity so that we lose the Library of Alexandria and the whole knowledge base of classical antiquity. Why do that? And moreover, moreover, here's the really disturbing implication. If we are now at a point, maybe 10 to 20 years away from the technological singularity, mm -hmm. what are they going to do to stop that from happening? Because we have a global society right now where the internet allows for a free flow of this kind of scientific and technical knowledge across the planet. 
if any one group of people achieves the technological singularity on Earth, it's going to become a global phenomenon within probably days. Yeah. Right? So my question is this. If they've gone to these great lengths to manipulate various societies throughout history, are we about to undergo a controlled demolition and a, an engineered reset to prevent us from reaching the technological singularity, which would also give us a military parity with them. It would allow us to defend ourselves right. against them. Right. What do you think something like that would look like? I think that what happened during COVID might be a test run of it. In other words, you had a small group of people, a policy planning elite, um, effectively shut down all of industry and uh, basically sequester people within their homes and garner unquestioning obedience from the vast majority of the population. That would be proof of concept for a much larger, uh, a much larger freezing of technical and industrial activity across the face of the earth with any one of a number of excuses being used for why we needed to basically halt all um, you know, scientific technical research and why we needed to basically uh, uh, vacate cities. I mean, think about this, like our modern advanced industrial civilization is an urban phenomenon. If you were to engineer something like COVID but m m far more vir virulent, I mean, something that actually required a serious quarantine measures to be put into place, it would become almost impossible to live in cities. Nobody would want to live in them, right? right? Mm -hmm. So there would be a mass exodus to the countryside and you would be laying the groundwork for a shift back to a kind of uh, neo-agrarian feudal peasant lifestyle where people are close to the land again, mm -hmm. right? And they're not congregated in urban areas that also then become batteries for technological and scientific research and development. Any number of things could be used in order to create conditions for that. An, an EMP event could be used mm -hmm. to do that. Right? I mean, think about how functional cities would be, or rather how dysfunctional, how quickly dysfunctional they would become if an EMP were to take out, you know, the whole electric grid across large parts of the planet. Thank <laughs> you.